Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and today we're going to be talking about the Ogre Kingdom, specifically Skrag and Greasus. These are two characters that have been available since the launch of Warhammer 3, but despite being Game Freak characters, they haven't really been that unique. Now I'm expecting Update 6.0 to have some sort of changes to make the Ogres feel a little bit better, but it would be really nice if we also started getting some changes for the individual characters to give you a little bit of a reason to play them all. You know, a little bit of variety is always great, especially when you start populating it with loads of really cool characters. I'm not saying full-blown reworks for them, but something a little bit different. Different. So, without further ado, let's begin. But before anything, a big thank you to our sponsors, Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming is a platform where you'll be able to buy video games for really good prices, which means that you'll be able to pick up Frostpunk 2, for example, for minus 33% off. It's a fantastic game, I've been playing it a lot in my own time recently, and it might be something that you are into too. There's a lot of different titles on this platform, and you can find a direct link which supports the channel at no extra cost to you in the description below. Not only that, but we're running a monthly giveaway in partnership with Instant Gaming. Win the game of your choice. All you have to do is go down to the link at the description below, which is right next to the partnership link, and sign up. You don't even have to make a purchase. There's loads of games coming out lately, and there might be something that tickles your fancy. So, with that being said, thank you so much for Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video, and let's get back to our regularly scheduled content. Okay, let's start with Greasus Goldtooth. So Greasus Goldtooth is the Ogre Tyrant, essentially being the racial leader for the Ogres. While other Ogre tribes are essentially neutral, they still kind of fall in line with him. So is there anything that could actually happen to Greasus to make him very unique and interesting while still keeping his identity as an Ogre and whatever might happen in terms of changes with 6.0? And to be honest, there is something which could be done just to make him a little unique but give him a lot of flavour. You might recall that the Norskins and the Greenskins have a mechanic which involves defeating the leader from their respective factions. When you do so, you could form confederation, release the enemy warlord, or execute the enemy warlord. This is what's on screen right now for Norska. Something like this could also be introduced for Greasus alone. And you'd have four options here, so form confederation, execute enemy warlord, release enemy warlord, or vassalize enemy warlord. This would mean that they'd have to start paying you constantly. There's more to this, don't you worry. But the idea here is the Over Tyrant having all the tribes serving under him. Which would mean that if any tribes are destroyed, you should be able to bring them back in a very similar vein as to how the Empire does too. Allowing you to populate the world with different Ogre tribes. They could be found in different locations, just having a little marker like the Warriors of Chaos do when they're bringing back the Northmen tribes. Now you might be saying, that doesn't sound too interesting. But the idea here is to then expand upon the vassal system a little bit further. Creative Assembly could take inspiration from Crusader Kings in a certain way with how the vassal contracts work. This could be a separate panel, as you can see here, with the feudal taxes being from zero all the way up to 100%, meaning that yes, you could tax 100% of available funds to your vassals and also go down to zero, but change them as you will. You could go up and down, kind of like how you would normally do with all the total wars, with your own respective taxes, but this would be for your vassals. The idea here is, if you've got them on zero, they'll be higher, more likely to like you, send more reinforcements, and the more money that they have access to, the more active the vassals will be, because the vassal system right now is they're very much dormant, but this would allow them to kind of boost up a little bit. However, the higher the taxes that you put onto your vassals, it means that they're going to have to have less units up and about, meaning that you're going to have to defend them more, but your coffers will be massively inflated to be able to get more armies up and running. This could also affect the relationship that your vassals have, so the more that you're taxing them, the higher the chance that they might even try to rebel. It could be further improved with allowing your vassal to declare war or not completely independent from you. So you decide if they're going to expand from their own right, or if you're just going to be taking the settlements and giving it to them whenever you see fit to improve their empire and thus improve their taxation. Naturally, allowing your vassal to then be able to declare war on their own right does have some problems. You would have to keep an eye on your vassal because they could get defeated and you might end up joining some other wars, but it's the risk that you want to take to make sure that you're building up a kingdom and the ogres are reigning supreme. 
Something like this is rather simple, but it does sound very cool and is incredibly law-friendly for Grisus. He would have a bunch of ogre tribes essentially being vassals to him, and he would be as extortionate as possible. But with the added element of player choice, that would allow the player to be as cruel or as kind as possible. The idea here is to see something a little bit different, because it's very likely that Mr. Manny to the DLC Lord that is coming at the end of this year, is going to focus very heavily on contracts. Well, this is technically a contract, but it's not the ogre contract system, is it? It's just building up a vassal empire. And finally, Scrag the Slaughterer. So this is the prophet of the Great Moor. He's constantly wandering because he's basically just listening to whatever he thinks are visions from the Great Moor. First and foremost, I've said this in a previous video, it would be nice to see Scrog moved. Mostly because, well... Yeah, I'm expecting Mr. Manita to be placed there, so it would be nice to get Scrog somewhere else just to have a law friendly start for our friend. They could literally put Scrog anywhere, though it would be kind of nice to see him start close to the Great Moor and then just expand from there. Or at least in the northern mountains of Morn, just to provide a little bit of a roadblock for Grimgore, who is spreading around a lot lately and it does become a bit of a problem for a lot of the factions. Now, something that could be done here to make him a little bit unique would be something similar to the Nemesis Crown. Hear me out, I know this sounds a little bit weird, but rather than finding something, picking it up and sealing away a curse and so on, it would be getting faction buffs. So every few turns or so, you would get a premonition of the Great Maul. Call it that, right? And you would decide, do I want to do these or do I not want to do these? If you decide yes, you have to then kill a certain amount of enemies. It could be scripted towards factions or races or just overall as a sacrifice to the Great Moor. Maybe even giving you the option of killing off some of your own troops to sacrifice to the Great Moor. This would be some sort of bar that you'd fill up, very similar to that of Epidemius with the Plague, so you'd need to do a certain amount of actions, and, yep, you'll get some bonuses. These bonuses wouldn't be as strong as the ones from the Nemesis Crown, because obviously those are very highly inflated, and it would be mostly towards faction-wide bonuses, alongside giving you some instant recruitment towards Gorges, very similar to the current mercenary system that we do have in Warhammer 3 when you look towards like Malachi and Mikasin. However, if you decide to ignore them, you'd go down a step, right? And the idea here is that you'd start either losing buffs or taking some debuffs. This would incentivize you to be aggressive, but if you've already taken a few nice buffs overall, then if you've decided at this point, say, maybe 70 turns in, you don't want to get into any wars with anyone at the moment, you just want to build up for a few turns, well, yeah, you can. Just lose one step. It's player freedom with a little bit of punishment, but stuff that can actually easily be avoided. The buffs themselves could be some faction-wide buffs, maybe boosting up your army very little, maybe just a little percentage or so, or just go in the same way as Epidemia where you get more research rates because the ogre tree is quite large if that's not changing it would still be quite useful to have a lot of research bonuses call it inspired by the moor or something like that but it's simple enough to introduce and have something really fun for scrog to have to make him quite unique the idea is small reworks are generally quite good look at Karl franz for example and look at gelt gelt had something dramatically different, whereas Karl Franz built up on something that was already available and became exclusive to him. And Epidemius, well, he has something very minor which just added some extra effect. This would be something minor in the style of Epidemius. Not everyone has to be wholly unique with loads of different mechanics and so on. Not everyone has to be Malachi or Tamakon, for example. Sometimes going a little bit less but still adding in a lot of flavor is a great way to go for a character. The reason I'm making this video is because I've been thinking about the ogres, because when Maneater comes in, what's going to happen is he's likely going to have unique mechanics. I mean, we already know that he's got something to do with like contracts and so on, it's been stated already, but it would be a massive shame if the other two main ogres, the ones from launch, the ones that people got for pre-ordering the game, for example, ended up just kind of ignored and not as fun as them. Creative Assembly have been doing wonderful things when it comes to these recent patches, introducing loads of systems to make other characters more playable, and it would be great to see all the ogres brought into line, because let's be honest here, after this DLC, whatever it ends up being called, I don't think it's actually got a name yet, but yeah, after this DLC, I very, very much doubt that we'll see ogre content post this, because... 
well, they could do, like, characters in Lords and Hero Packs and so on, but the units are done. They've even had to go into getting the Carrions, which were a unit upgrade, rather than a unit, so they could flesh out the roster a little bit more. This is what happens when the Ogre Kingdoms end up being one of the younger races in Warhammer Fantasy in terms of model production. They had some really cool lines, but they really don't have that much. Hell, we've got a bunch of Rhinoxes and a bunch of different types of Maneaters, when really Maneaters were just hero squads, and Rhinoxes, well, they were a Forge World thing, and I think you bought them one at a time, and even then, you weren't really using them. But yeah, these are just some basic ideas I've been sitting on. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I've just been really thinking about the Ogres, because it looks like they're done. Maybe they're going to be the race that is fully done first? It looks like it, at least. I mean, I thought Zinch was kind of done, but then Creative Assembly stated that we could see uh, Egrim, which says there's a few things missing for Zinch. So yeah, that could mean that we could see another Zinch DLC in the future. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'll see you all again very, very soon. A big thank you to Instant Gaming for the sponsorship, as per usual. It's very nice working with them, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.